Uh, when country becomes a party to the Stockholm Convention, they uh, needed to do few things uh, uh, immediately, like you know, appointing an official contact point, national focal point, and then they also have to prepare and implement a national implementation plan, what is in short we call NIP, NIP. This national implementation plan is um, prepared not only as a stock uh, standalone document, but as a as a you know national sustainable development strategy is a part of it and this do this document while preparing you know uh, they have to understand what is the situation in the country what are the national legislations regulations what is the situation of these persistent organic pollutants in the country as a pesticide as a waste as as an industrial chemical some of them are you know, the Stockholm Convention lists the chemicals in three separate lists. So list A, NX A, what is called, are the chemicals they are listed there to eliminate completely. And there are chemicals that are listed in NX B that will be used for some time until the alternatives are found, but then restricted to use on, uh, under certain areas only for, only for that purpose. And NXC are the chemicals they are produced, emitted, uh, you know, un, uh, intentionally. They are just released as a byproduct. So these are listed in NXC. These chemicals, so the country, when prepares the national implementation plan, they understand what is the situation with the NXA chemicals in that country, what is the situation with the NXB. For example, DDT is in NXB, and not every country is using DDT for um, you know vector control. But there are other countries which are still using it only for vector control. It cannot be used for any other thing. So, like uh, NXC chemicals, uh, dioxin, furan, these kind of you know unintentionally produced chemicals, the countries make plans to re continuously re uh, reduce the release. So over the time, you know, they, they uh, you know, control the release, I mean, uh, the, the goal would be. So these plans, you know, once you have these inventories, then you look into whether or not your uh, laws addresses them. If not, then you'll have to prepare your legislation. And then once the legislation are in place, and once you know what is the situation with the waste or, or different chemicals, then you know you, you might also need to involve like uh, various sectors. For example, the custom, whether or not there are any import export happening on these chemicals. Maybe there are some waste being exported to dispose of, and maybe there are some chemicals are imported, though they are listed in the NXS, but. Maybe for that particular country, you know, there is five years of exemption of use it. Then there may be import. So these information uh, are only, you know, available from the customs. And there may be the energy sector, for example. There is an industrial sector, for example. There is an agricultural sector, for example. Those who are using pesticides, some of the pups pesticide, whether or not they are still in the warehouse, where they have been, you know, all absolute stockpile. What is the situation? And once you know that, then you might want to, you know, the, the, the uh, other uh, um, institution within the government, they will um, give budget, whether there will be uh, enough resources available internally to deal with this, or they will go for the uh, financial mechanism under the convention, which is global environment facility. And once you have a national implementation plan, then only you can uh, think of writing a proposal to deal with this and national implementation plan is the um, is uh, in absence of national implementation plan the JEF will not fund any of the activities so this is a crucial document also at the same time. Mm -hmm.